Now, good morning. We are the 15th of uh, September. Uh, I'm just after moving these cattle here now. It's only 11 o'clock. Um, all the girls are in school, so um, I'm after moving them down into this lower place here. This is the field that I was meant to be grazing um, when I came home. Or when I was away, they were meant to be in this section here. And as I was home then, I was going to walk my way back up this hill, up to the top where they happened to be when I did get home and down the road uh, into the land across the way there. So that was the plan. So obviously they started at the top and they worked their way down. So I'm at the lowest point here now. I have this place to graze and I have that place to graze. A little strip across that hedge and there's a gap over there along the road. I'm going to snake them out there and get them into the field across the road. So that's what the plan is for the next couple of days. So this will do them 24 hours, 24 hours. So we're now, what day are we? Thursday, yes, or Saturday. I'll probably do that little bit of a snaky move across the road and uh, uh, yeah. So basically this grass here now, I got a few people asking me um, about the quality of the grass. Look, I've lots and lots and lots of grass. And is this grass as good of quality as uh, as the short grass that would be have been fertilized or nitrogen on it. Well obviously that grass that's shorter is gonna be higher protein and uh, probably more fattening as well, yeah. But then when you have higher protein and more fattening, their dunk tends to be like a hose pipe out the back. So is that right as well? I don't know. I don't like the look of it anyhow. I'd rather their dunk to be more solid. This hose pipe grass, as I call it, a lot of it is wasted. It's ran through them and it's out the back as well. Yes, they might fatten better, but does it need to be that high to get the same results? So anyhow, this grass here, yeah, another reason then as well. Obviously, I'm uh, I'm uh, grazing a 12-month-of-the-year system. So if I have this kind of grass for the 12 months, I believe that growing it to this length, that I can graze it for 12 months of the year, is far better quality over the 12 months rather than a boom and bust kind of outfit where you'll have six months of the cattle out grazing like hell on this high nitrogen high lush green grass and then a big change when they're housed they go in on hay and silage it takes their bodies and their stomachs a while to adapt so they'll lose condition straight away until their gut has adapted to the new feed and then when they're let out again in the winter they lose weight again so basically, my theory is that if I leave them out, yes, I do feed them silage when I'm out as well, but it's a very slow transition and it's never fully just silage. They'll always, always, always have grass for 12 months of the year. So to me, it's worth growing it up that height because there's lots of it to eat. What's trampled on the ground is soil armour protects the land as they're going through it. Do they wreck the land as they're going through for the six months of winter? No, because they're only on it ever for two days. Any one part of the farm. And it has two to three months rest in between. So any damage that's done, which is minimal, is repaired. So that's my theory. Now look, at, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that that's what I'm trying to do. So it's a 12 month grazing schedule of so listen it's the way it works is i suppose is uh the cattle mightn't gain as much as the conventional type cattle in the springtime but they won't lose as much as the conventional type cattle in the winter time they will continually grow at a lower rate but for 12 months as opposed to struggling over the winter but look at they won't thrive as well either over the winter. They'll thrive better in springtime, these cattle here as well. But it's less boom and bust type of uh, grazing. Now, I hope that makes sense. 
Um, maybe I didn't explain it right or great, but that's my theory in my head. So, uh, yeah, that's the situation. They're all in here now, they've their heads down. I left them in that upper place there a little bit long. Well, purposely, I left them in a, a day and a half. They had an area there, an area across the fence, that corner, that corner. So it's like a crossroads there. They could access uh, the four different fields and that hedging and whatever they wanted to pick. So that's the situation. They'll graze a good bit of this down now and it'll regrow. And if I'm coming back in here now in November and it'll be like that again, I will be very pleased. And so will the cattle. So uh, I'll listen over this video before I post it. And if I talk nonsense, I won't post it. And if I think it's all right, I'll post it. So you can always correct me in the comments. Uh, yeah, so um, it's a lovely day here now. It's a good dry week. We had lots of rain last week when I was away, so growth is good. It's still warm, and uh, we'll see how we get on uh, from now on in for the winter. So that's the story. Uh, I'll close off now, and uh, we'll chat again very soon. So for now, I'll say good luck and goodbye.